Welcome to the MineArc Systems Operator training video. This short presentation will show you how to operate a MineArc Systems coal safe refuge. Step 1. Remove gas monitors. Break seal on the gas monitor storage located on the front wall and remove gas monitors. If gas monitors are not present, proceed to step 2. Step 2. Open entry door and enter airlock. Before entering the airlock, ensure it is vacant by looking through the portal window. If airlock is occupied, wait until it is vacant and the internal door is closed. Enter the airlock by rotating the handles to the vertical unlock position. Make certain to take both gas monitors into the airlock if carrying. To secure the door, Rotate the handles to the horizontal lock position. Step 3. Commence airlock flushing. Turn pilot switch on and open ball valve to commence flushing. Step 4. Activate with pump gas monitor. Remove the with pump gas monitor from its storage case. Activate with pump gas monitor by pulling battery tab then pushing and holding the power button. Place your hand over the pump when directed by the gas monitor. Step 5. Flush airlock. Remove the 4-minute timer from the gas monitor holder. Flush the airlock for 4 minutes or until CO is less than 25 ppm. Step 6. Leave with pump gas monitor in gas monitor holder. Close ball valve and leave with pump gas monitor and timer in gas monitor holder for next occupants entering airlock. Step 7. Open airlock door and enter main refuge. Open airlock door by rotating the handles to the vertical unlock position and enter the main refuge with the without gas pump monitor. Close and seal airlock door. To secure the door, rotate the handles to the horizontal lock position. Please note, when the refuge is fully occupied, the airlock can remain open. Do not remove SCSR until scrubber system and oxygen supply are activated and gases are within acceptable concentration as indicated by gas monitor. Refer to the bottom of the life support settings table for acceptable gas concentrations. Step 8. Install Marcosorb CO2 cartridges. Remove three Marcosorb CO2 cartridges from their storage location. Remove cartridges from their packaging and place on top of scrubber system. The cartridges will slot into place with the rubber seals on the bottom side. Replace all cartridges when CO2 reaches 1% or as indicated by the life support settings table located on the refuge wall. Step 9. Install Marcosorb CO cartridge. If carbon monoxide concentration reaches 25 ppm, remove Marcosorb CO cartridge from its storage location and packaging. Remove one CO2 cartridge from top of scrubber and replace with CO cartridge. Use only as needed. Step 10. Turn on master control valve. Turn on master control valve counterclockwise, located on the back wall. Step 11. Turn on temperature control valves. Turn on all temperature control valves, TCV 1, 2, 3, and 4, for one minute to start scrubber system. Step 12. Turn off temperature control valves. Turn off temperature control valves, TCV 2, 3, and 4 only. Caution. TCV 1 remains on at all times unless internal temperature is below 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. Cycle TCV1 when CO2 reaches 1% by turning on for 30 minutes. Repeat as needed. Step 13. Monitor wet bulb temperature. 
Turn on TCV 2, 3, and 4 individually to increase cooling if wet bulb temperature exceeds 84 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. Observe temperature and relative humidity on hygrometer and refer to wet bulb temperature chart on refuge wall. Caution! Using additional TCVs when not needed will consume additional cooling refrigerant and potentially reduce scrubber operating time to less than 96 hours. Step 14. Install and adjust O2 flow meter. Remove flow meter and gloves from sealed case. Put on nitrile gloves and connect flow meter to quick connect coupling. Adjust flow meter to 0.5 liters per occupant by rotating knob counterclockwise. See life support settings table on refuge wall for flow rates. Step 15. Gas monitoring. Retrieve with pump gas monitor, marker, and timer from airlock and turn off by pushing the power button. Use for external monitoring only. Use the without pump gas monitor to monitor internal O2, CO2, CO, and CH4. Adjust oxygen flow meter and replace Marcosorb CO2 cartridges when gases are outside acceptable gas concentrations. Refer to the bottom of the life support settings table on the refuge wall for a guide on reading alarms and ensuring that breathing air quality is maintained. Gas Testing Guide Using the timer and marker, record gas concentrations and wet bulb temperature hourly on the charts located at the rear of the photographic operating procedures. Insufficient oxygen level in the refuge. If oxygen level is less than 18.5%, adjust the oxygen flow meter up accordingly. High oxygen concentration detected in the refuge. If oxygen concentration exceeds 23%, turn flow meter off. Ensure airlock door is open and open ball valve to commence airlock flushing. Flush until oxygen concentration inside main refuge is less than 22%. Turn flow meter on when oxygen concentration is 20%. Excess carbon dioxide detected in refuge. If carbon dioxide level exceeds 1%, remove the Marcosorb CO2 cartridges from the scrubber and replace with new cartridges. Refer to the life support settings table for approximate Marcosorb CO2 cartridge replacement duration. Step 16. Emergency Gas Bypass System. The emergency gas bypass system is a safety feature designed to extend the duration of the refuge. The system must only be activated after 96 hours of normal operation. Before activating the system, the high pressure gauge on the scrubber must read below 400 PSI, or the scrubber airflow with all TCVs on must be too low to maintain the CO2 concentration below 1%. To activate the system, ensure all TCVs are on. Open the emergency gas bypass valve located on the left-hand side of the scrubber system. Rotate knob counterclockwise until low pressure gauge reads between 30 to 50 PSI. Use the lowest pressure that allows gas concentration to remain at acceptable levels. For further information, refer to general overview and operating procedures. The most important thing you can do now is to make sure your refuge is maintained in good operational order. So in the unfortunate event you need to use the refuge, you can feel safe knowing that it is ready for use. This can be accomplished through weekly checks and regular servicing, which can be carried out by Minarch Systems. For further details, or if you have any queries regarding the operation of a coal safe refuge, please contact Minark Systems or visit the website at www.minark.com.